From satellite image, it shows clearly that the Euphrates River is extremely drying up. The Euphrates River is the longest and the most important river in the Middle East. Originating in Turkey, the Euphrates flows through Syria and Iraq to join the Tigris in the Shat al-Arab, which empties into the Persian Gulf. Since the last two decades, the Euphrates is continuously drying up. Strangled by the water policies of Iraq's neighbors, Turkey and Syria, three years severe drought, and years of misuse by Iraq and its farmers, the river is significantly smaller than it was just a few years ago. Some officials worry that it could soon be a country with no river. The shrinking of the Euphrates, a river so crucial to the birth of civilization that the Book of Revelation prophesied its drying up as a sign of the end times, has decimated farms along its banks, has left fishermen impoverished and has depleted riverside towns as farmers flee to the cities looking for work. Though it once was susceptible to regional flooding, numerous dams have been built along the Euphrates in the past 50 years which now regulate its water flow. The drying up of Euphrates, Syria's longest river is raising concerns as the demise of the water body could lead to a humanitarian disaster in the country. Iraq is battling its worst drought in decades. Lack of rainfall and poor resource management has left communities that depend on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers devoid of the water they need to survive. In Islam, some of the hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad suggest that the Euphrates will dry up, revealing unknown treasures that will be the cause of strife and war. The drying up of Euphrates River also raise concern among Christian community. In the Holy Bible, Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 says and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The drying up of Middle East is not a prophecy anymore. It is not a prediction. It is a fact that is happening. Five largest lakes in the Middle East are already drying up. Chapter number 16, verse number 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now we're moving on to the sixth angel of the six last plagues. He pours out his bowl or he pours out his vial. And it's not just anywhere where he pours out his vial. His vial or bowl is poured on the great Euphrates River. We know about the great Euphrates River. The great Euphrates River is part of the Fertile Crescent. And if you do any research, the Fertile Crescent is the Tigris, the Euphrates, and it stretches to the Nile, or that area is called the Fertile Crescent. And some of the most ancient civilizations are located in that area. So, for the river Euphrates that has fed men for literally thousands of years to dry up, what type of catastrophe could that be? The great Euphrates River dried up. Now, we have to take a look. What could this be? What, what kind of clues, what kind of hints can we draw from the scriptures? Well, number one, the fifth plague, the plague right before this, this, there was a darkness that was poured out upon the beast. His government, his throne, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And the pain from that was so bad to they gnashed their tongues. So whatever this darkness was, like we said before, it had some physical effect. It did something physically that caused sores and pain. So ancient Babylon was located with 
the Euphrates River running right through the midst of it. So, do we think that the fifth plague and the darkness, whatever that may be, that caused those pains, that caused that soreness, that thick darkness, probably that poisonous cloud, did it have something to do with the great river Euphrates drying up? Because if it was poured in the location of ancient Babylon, then it would have been poured right into the river Euphrates. Something to think about. Something to wonder about. God, in the name of Jesus, we you to look on and bless and have your way. Touch hearts and minds and help your people everywhere. In the name of Jesus, thank God. Amen. Have a great day. This is also confirmation that Jesus, in his second advent, he will not come alone. And he will not come for the same reason he came the first time. The first time he came as a lamb, the second time he will come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The first time he came in peace, the second time Enoch tells us that he comes as the judge.